All right, well, it's, it's about that time, so let's get ready to, ready to go here. And we've got people still showing up, but, um, and thanks, people, for introducing yourselves. Um, we got a good, good turnout. Nice to see a lot of new names um, and some old ones. Uh, I see my friend Bruce from up in Canada is here. Um, welcome, Bruce. Good to see you back. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my uh, my Can You Hear Me Now slide. And I basically hang out here for a while. This is the best way I know to make sure that everybody on the clinic is is hearing me and we can do a little bit of troubleshooting. But I, I tend to not want to hold things up and, and pr provide a replay later if you're having problems. So um, hopefully you can hear me. And if so, go ahead and go ahead and chat and say, yeah, I can hear you in the, in the chat. If not, um, like obviously you're looking at this uh, screen, so hopefully you'll say no because um, you're not hearing me. Um, guests are automatically muted. I just saw that question come up. So don't worry about that. Um, I don't have... Uh, awesome bandwidth here so i'm really hoping the the audio is well i'm kind of up in uh in western new york and uh away from my normal awesome fiber but audio should be okay and and hopefully we can get through this whole thing and i see a lot of you chiming in that you can hear me which is which is great i'll keep referring back to that chat screen as we go to see if there's any other problems, but your best bet's going to be to just uh, refresh and, and start and, and go from there. Let's get started. This, I want to make sure you're in the right place. So this clinic is for you. If you're a football coach who wants to improve how you teach backfield footwork and mesh, and hopefully you run the wing T or some similar hybrid wing T because the stuff I'm going to be focused on is, is pretty specific to the wing T. Um, you know, I'd say if you're a, if you're a power eye coach or, you know, maybe a, just a jet sweep coach, this could be useful um, because there's some similarities. Um, but when you look at some things like if you're, if you're running a spread read option, I'm not, I'm not going to be much help to you, but you probably aren't here if you're, if you're that, that coach anyway. And, and hopefully you run the the wing T or some version of it, and you're you're ready to roll and learn some more. A um, little bit about myself. I'm uh, I've been coaching about ten years at the at the youth level, and in, in, um, which is just outside of Portland. And Sherwood's been running the wing T, and it's kind of its own flavor, the wing T for. 20 plus years probably more like 25 years now and we we run the same program from the the high school down to uh, youth, the youth program um, i had two sons play and and letter at the high school and won a few state championships and we've been pretty successful with it in oregon and i'm excited for a big season this coming year and that's i'm coaching with the high school this year even though i'm i'm remote i'm doing a lot of film and back office tech work for them while I'm away from Oregon until till October. So this is the first year I'm not coaching on the field for a while, but I'll be back back on the field next year. And, and it's, um, it's hard this time of year because you guys are probably all either getting, getting things lined up to get started or if you're a high school coach, you're probably already doing some summer workouts and maybe some seven-on-seven seven and camps and so forth. And I miss that. Fortunately, I got to run a – run an academy for some kids um, back in Sherwood all through the spring. So I got a little bit of that in, but this year I get to kind of armchair quarterback. So let's, let's dive right into it and, and talk about how, um, you know, why I'm even talking about footwork and, and, it, and why it's so important for this offense. And, and fundamentally the wing T relies on deception in the backfield. Um, it's not deception in the offensive line. Um, I mean, you might, get advanced and do some deception pulling, but mostly you're going to, you're going to make defenses wrong by having consistent work, um, meaning your steps, alignment and movement in the backfield 
and being able to give the ball to, you know, anywhere from three to four ball carriers with very similar flow. And that won't work if you don't have good footwork, good mesh, and consistency across all the plays within a series. Um, footwork is also, and, and a lot of what we're going to talk about in this clinic is, is for the quarterback. Um, and a good wing T quarterback is going to hide the ball naturally through footwork and hand position. And we'll talk about some very simple techniques for that. But a big part of the, the wing T is that quarterback getting his back to the line of scrimmage and hiding that ball. And for that reason, we often don't do ball fakes because we don't want to show the ball, but sometimes we will. And I'll explain some of the times we do and don't. Um, Lastly, it's important that you get that ball carrier to the right spot at the right place and time um, because the wing tee relies on a very quick um, point of attack, bringing multiple blockers to the same spot. And that, you know, that hole is going to appear and disappear you know, within a half second to a second. And if you're, you're not consistent, and you don't have the right flow with your backfield and you're going to be out of alignment with your line and your lead blocking and, and you just, things are going to, they're not going to work. And you might think you're calling the wrong play. Maybe you call the perfect play, but it just so happens that, you know, your fullback got to the hole a half second to a second late and, and the hole was gone. So I want to do a quick poll. I'm going to, I'm going to just give you a quick link in the chat here and it helps me, um, kind of understand kind of where things are with my audience and make sure that I'm, uh, you know, able to answer questions for you. I'm going to just pull, post this right in the chat. Hopefully you can get to it. If not, um, cause you might, maybe you're on an iPad and you don't want to bounce out of it. I understand that, but maybe you'll get to it later. Uh, so hopefully you get a chance to answer that. And I might come back and look at some of those things as we get towards the end and the, and the Q and a. So let's talk about the kind of first thing. It really isn't anything about um, footwork. But if you think about um, anything related to footwork, you, you have to come from a known starting position. And that you have to have consistency with that. And that means that your backfield is consistently lined up with whatever your formation approach is. We tend to run a traditional wing tee formation with uh, – a strong side wing back and a weak side half back or a dive back as it's called um, over the tackle or just kind of hashing the tackles outside leg. But we also run a lot from the double wing. And we call that Rose and Lily. Um, Rose when the tight end's right, Lily when he's left. And we teach that, um, that wing back who's on the, the weak side to keep his alignment consistent as if there was a tight end there. And that takes a lot of time for these kids to get. But we do a lot of work with uh, hose. Um, we'll use cones if we don't have a hose, or sometimes we'll use cones in addition to a hose. But we get really consistent and get the players checking that. And if you're like me, you may not get to practice on a pristine turf field that's painted. Um, and you may not have great lines and, and hashes to work off. So you got to really make your own um, grid sometimes and, and really work on that consistency. And especially when you're starting the season, you want to be pretty deliberate about this and make sure that, you know, you're not, you're not having a timing issue, um, even though your footwork's perfect, but your fullback is six yards back instead of four yards back. Um, that's going to be a problem. So there's a general template that I like to use with, with any series that we're installing. And, and we, we do this at the high school. Um, I coached at the eighth grade level, which is, you know, 13 and 14 year olds for five years. And, and these are kids that have been running the wing tee. And in many cases, this is, this is their sixth year. And we will still go down and break things down into this, this same approach. And so these five steps are, you know, what you would use for any of the series that we're going to talk about. And the first is that you better make sure the coaches are on the same page. And, uh, you know, for example, when I was running this um, academy in Sherwood earlier this year, um, the three main coaches or two guys I've coached with for many years, we, even though we've been coaching together for a long time, we got out on the field early. We're doing buck series today 
and we reviewed everything together and made sure that every step for every key player on that play was agreed upon. And we would run through it ourselves. So you got to get the coaches on the same page. You don't want, you know, the, the quarterback coach saying one thing and the, the fullback coach saying another thing or your running backs coach and your line coach is, is off base with everybody else. So get, get on the same page. And that just takes time. And, and especially if you're with a new staff, um, I strongly encourage you to, you know, the whiteboard's helpful, but get away from the whiteboard a bit and, and walk through things yourself. And do step two yourselves with, with the coaches. And that's bird dog. And bird dog is um, a technique where you walk through um, individual steps with, with everybody involved in lockstep. So you're not running full speed. You're not even running half speed. Um, you're given maybe a quick cadence. You know, we do a lot of just, you know, bird dog on sound is what we'll say. And it'll be bird dog. You know, we'll say right, uh, you know, right 36 down uh, bird dog on sound set. And then the players take one step and then set. And then on every set, or you might say hit, you're just doing one step. And the kids get used to holding their position, um, you know, staying with a good stance, staying balanced. If they're falling over while they're doing this, then they're probably not balanced properly and you have something you need to fine tune. So you go from this bird dog and we do, the QB is going to do a lot more of this individually. Um, backfield needs to do it also. I do it with the line, but the QB is going to have the most work because he he is the most important player that's, um, that's got to have that footwork pre precision down properly. Um, then you go to a walkthrough where you can, you can kind of go through at half speed um, to run through and start to look at things full speed. Whenever you feel like things are, you know, getting off the rails a bit, then go back to bird dog. And especially in the, in the summer as you're installing, I would, I would be bird dogging um, all the way up through the start of the season. Uh, especially for maybe your, if you got two series that you're going to rely on. If you're a youth coach, you probably got to, you know, you're maybe going to run buck series and, and the belly series. Maybe you're going to run buck series and some jet. Well, for those series, make sure you keep bird dogging those. Um, it may seem boring at times, but that, that work will pay off because it becomes automatic in the kids' head, um, their minds. The other thing I like to do is incorporate key linemen at the right time. You know, you're probably going to run through a separate installation with your line and learning, you know, the fundamental blocks. Um, but as we, you know, for example, if we're running buck sweep and we might be at the end of the first week and getting ready to run some full team, um, we'll, we'll bring the guards over with the backfield and run it with just the, you know, quarterback, guards, uh, halfbacks or wingbacks and the fullback and, and work through the drills there and use the same – you know, cones and milestones that I might be using for the, the guards, but then you see all sorts of interesting things happen as you, as you bring these pieces together. And the reason I like to just incorporate key linemen is that I'm, boy, I, I hate team time in practice. Um, it's, you're, it's hard to coach, you know, 11 kids or 22 kids or however many you have out there. And the more reps I can get doing um, useful things for fewer numbers of players, the better off it's going to be. So while I'm doing maybe a, 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 a walkthrough with just the guards and the backfield, I can have another coach that's maybe working on down block or reach block technique with the rest of the line so that they're not wasting time. Um, and keep it simple. Avoid tinkering. Uh, this offense has been run by coaches for, for 60 plus years. And the footwork that I'm going to show you is not something I've invented. It's something that, you know, many, many coaches before me have laid the tracks. And, and this stuff works. So avoid, avoid doing too much tinkering and make sure you get to the fundamental um, concepts to, uh, to make sure you're doing that right before you say, well, let's have you delay or maybe widen out a little bit. Or why don't you start deeper? Um, Try to avoid that because every little special thing you have to put in a kid's, kid's head is going to be one more thing that, you know, he's likely to screw up in the, in the game. All right, let's dive into Buck Series. And if, uh, if questions come up, um, put them into chat. Um, and 
uh, if it's if I see it and it's relevant to what I'm talking about right now, I'll try to answer it right now. If uh, otherwise, I'll just make sure I get to it by the, you know, by the end of the of the clinic. Give me one. All right. Well, the, the the scope of this webinar isn't to cover how to run all of these plays. We're focused on footwork, so I'm hoping you have maybe at least a rudimentary understanding of, of these series, but I'll give a brief intro as we hit each one without getting into too much detail. The Buck series has a, a, a few key components. The fullback is, is faking or, or running a trap. The, uh, the weak side running back, who's let's just assume he's going to be in that halfback or diveback position, is running the Buck sweep. And the quarterback is going to run a boot um, or – uh, you may have heard it called waggle, um, and that's the key backfield flow. Um, the strong side wing back, his responsibility is to block um, either for the trap or the buck sweep, or in the case of the waggle, he's he's probably running the route. So we're not going to cover his footwork. So what you're seeing in front of you here is, I'm gonna, I'm showing you the quarterback's foot feet at the start of the play, and and you'll always see each each little um, um, series that I'm going through here looking kind of the same, which, it, which is um, zero showing the starting position. And we're going to kind of walk through how each of these steps work. Now I changed how um, I changed how I, how I taught this just this last year, because it turns out some of the complexity I had in it wasn't really given any value. So we decided to keep things a little simpler. And when you talk to wing T coaches, there's going to be a lot of discussion about midline and relationship with the quarterback to the midline. And what we like to do on Buck series is has, have the quarterback come over the midline and give that away to the fullback, um, just barely. And so this first step is going to be a reverse pivot on his right foot. So this is assuming we're running, you know, like a, a buck sweep to the right, or it's the trap that's going to go to the right or the boot or waggle that's going to go left. So he's going to reverse pivot on his right foot. And that left foot is going to come across the midline uh, about eight inches. And, and if you think about this, the quarterback now has his back to the line of scrimmage. And he's going to be holding that ball right at his belly with the tip of the ball kind of sticking out of his belly. We call that the third hand. And he's holding that ball with two hands right in the belly, pointed straight out away from the defense with his back to the defense. So he's doing an effective job here of, of, of hiding the ball. And he's across the midline, like I said, um, about eight inches with that left foot. And how do you know it's eight inches? Well, you're going you're gonna to have a midline to work with, whether it's uh, ideally you're working on a field. You could spray paint it. Um, we had a track around an unpainted field and we would do some work with the quarterbacks just using the stripes on the track, but you need to have some reference for that quarterback um, or else he's going to have a hard time visualizing and understanding this. And you're going to have a hard time correcting him. That second step is going to go with that right foot right to the edge of that midline. And this is where the handoff would go to the fullback if, if you're running trapped. So it's right on that second step. So it's hard hitting, it's fast, and that handoff goes right then. If you're running buck sweep or the waggle, um, we use an influence fake here. We never show the ball. We don't fake the handoff. We don't put a hand out there. We just try to get those shoulder pads going close and the fullback making a good fake um, with his hands, keeping his eyes up, and then making a cut like he's running the ball. Um, and we'll – that's a, probably another discussion is how you teach the blocking for that. Um, but we don't have the quarterback showing that fake at all on this play. He's going to start to come across the midline with his left foot. And this is when he would be given that handoff to the halfback on the buck sweep. And then he continues to roll out on the waggle and he's getting flat by about that sixth step. And we like to put a cone um, out there right about 
right behind where the halfback was as an aiming point for that quarterback to make sure that he's getting the right depth but not too much depth and getting flat. And, um, you know, we also have that quarterback as he's coming off that, um, you know, if, assuming you're running the waggle here and he hasn't handed the ball off, he's putting that ball on his um, left hip in this case to, to further hide the ball as he comes around. Okay, so the, the keys here, quarterback is, is reverse pivoting. He's coming across the midline. He's giving up that midline just barely to that fullback. Um, and then on that third step, he's going to be making that sweep handoff. All right. Let's talk about the – yeah there's still some good points here so again work with the midline like a sideline or a yard line if if you need to make a line but you need to have a line for that quarterback to work with and i i don't even like just having cone set up i like to have something he can step over easily um so be creative and find a way to make that work um when you're teaching the quarterbacks their steps you can do this with multiple quarterbacks at once and you can watch them all if you're doing bird dogs so if you've got two quarterbacks, if you've got four quarterbacks, put them all on a midline, have them all work this at the same time as they do their footwork, and you can really get some good consistency that way. All right, let's talk about the fullback. Fullback, um, I've, I'm showing him, you know, we, we've got him four yards off the ball. Um, balance, stance, he's, he's straddling the midline just like the quarterback is. And that first step, is going to be with his back foot. So if he's going, if it's going to be the trap to the right, he's going to be coming to the left of the quarterback. So we're going to make that first step with the backside foot, which is the left foot. And he's going fast. Um, you know, he shouldn't overextend so that he's going to be unbalanced. But this is not like an offensive lineman power step. He's going to get, he's going to gain ground and be ready on that second step to take the handoff. And he's going to be just kind of right on that midline to barely um, over it. Remember that quarterback is barely giving up the midline. Um, that's where he's either going to take the hand off or he's going to make the good fake. Uh, we don't like overly dramatic fakes. You know, we want him really just keeping those eyes up, um, not putting his head down. And um, probably one of the best things we do to encourage that fake is that even if he's going to block somebody, say, um, filling for that backside guard on buck sweep we have him keep his head and hands tucked in and he won't use his hands to block he'll just try to run and get his his head inside and run through the defender with a shoulder rather than keep get those hands out and the reason we do that is um, sometimes that'll hold a linebacker for just another step or two if he sees his hands still down he's just not quite sure whether he has the ball or not and that third step he's He's ready to uh, um, hit the hole coming off that trapping uh, left guard, and he's going to make his cut uh, right over the center and kind of follow in that guard. Uh, sometimes, and this is you know maybe a little more advanced that we need to get into, um, uh, we we have that fullback stay straight on line. If we've got um, if we're looking at an even front and we're even able to widen out their, um, you know, maybe they're not playing too smart and they're playing outside shade on our guards, and we can widen them a bit. We'll make a call, and we might have that fullback just stay right on midline and run straight through and not even make that cut. Um, I saw a question come up. Uh, what about crisscross or res reverse? I'll, I'll get to some of this. Um, we have a counter that I'll talk about um, in a bit, um, and I'll, let me just add that to my list of questions to make sure we – we cover that adequately. All right. So fullback teaching points, again, get downhill fast. Um, first step is always that backside foot. Um, one coaching point here is that I forgot to write down is just like you do with receivers, um, watch out for false steps. Fullbacks love to kind of lock their feet or step back or roll back, um, really work on them being on the balls of their feet and ready to roll forward and not making a false step as they start. And you might have some tricks you've used with receivers to do that, like putting your foot 
behind their heels to make sure that they don't press down as they release, but get them, get them going downhill with that first step. Um, again, just to backside and midline, and they're going to look for a cut or bend just inside that trapping guard. All right, let's talk about the, let's talk about the halfback here. Now I'm going to assume you're, you're running this player from the halfback position. If you're running him from the wing back, uh, you're probably going to put him in motion if you're running buck sweep. It's not absolutely necessary if you've got a pretty fast uh, running back, but um, we pretty much would always put him in motion if we're going to run a uh, buck sweep, and that could be full kind of rocket style motion or it could be just a, you know, a three-step motion to get to that position. Um, but let's just assume halfback position. Um, that first step he's going to make is going to be a, a crossover with the left foot, uh, pivoting the right, and he's he's basically getting his body turned um, sideways so that left shoulder is to the line of scrimmage, and he's running flat across the line. We don't want him getting um, depth. He should really just be turning and running straight at where that fullback was because um, we don't want it too deep, and we want him ready to make his cut. That second step, again, is going to be right flat. Third step is um, when, when he's taking his hand off from the, the quarterback, and he should always be ready to um, give that fake on that third step. Um, fourth step, he's staying flat. And if you're running buck sweep, you're going to start to bend on that fifth step and make a hard left turn in this case on that sixth step. Um, buck sweep is not, you know, it's not, some would say it's not really even a sweep play. It's almost an off tackle or off tight end play. Um, and unless you're running some variation, um, you really want that, that halfback making, a, making that strong cut and turning right up to follow his, his guard. And I'll give that talking point here. So, you know, he's going to cross over towards midline with his away foot. Stay flat, right? Um, run right at that fullback starting position. Hard cut about the sixth step and follow your own guard. This is one reason why I love incorporating, you know, just the guards with this drill as they get really used to finding. And they can kind of think of it as their guard because it's the guy that's starting on their side of the field. He's just inside of him. And they're, they're almost following the same path as they go. Um, and, and he gets used to following him and making sure he turns up inside the kickout from the play side guard. Um, there's a question, two-point or three-point stance uh, for fullback. Um, we, use, we use a two-point stance um, and always have uh, – you know, I don't think too much about it, but my – my, my intuition says that he's in a much more athletic position. Um, we'll run some rocket sweep uh, with the fullback from that position. I just think it's, it's easier for him to be athletic and do the things he wants to do. Because um, remember, in the wing T, um, unlike maybe a power eye, that fullback is, is likely to be your number one ball carrier. He might, you know, he might get 10 carries a game. Your, your running backs might get eight carries a game. Um, and, and a fullback is not really a blocking back in this offense. Not that he never blocks, but your halfbacks and wingbacks are much more likely to be doing blocking on a play than the fullback is. The fullback is usually going to be um, uh, faking or filling the backside um, rather than lead blocking for uh, a running back. Now, there are, there are exceptions, of course, but that's, that's the general, general answer I would give you there. Hold on, we got a phone ringing here. All right. So a teaching progression for this is that um, individual posi positions can do reps of footwork, um, but the quarterback's going to need more. And just, you know, be precise when you're doing the bird dog. Don't, don't, don't allow for imprecise kind of half-ass um, effort here. And um, one, one trick is – to run this without the ball and it gets kids used to just worrying about not worrying, but just getting comfortable with their footwork before they're too worried about getting the right handoff, um, you know, doing the proper fake, um, with the ball and it gets your, it's going to get your mesh looking much better. And then obviously eventually you move up to full speed. 
All right, let me get back to my chat here to make sure I'm seeing any other questions. All right, we're looking good. I already alluded to this, but um, incorporating O-line is, is a great technique. Um, it, for me, it's usually guards. Um, it might be guard and tight end. The, the counter play that I'm going to talk about in a bit, we pull our tight end um, for the counter play off the down. And so we'll do this same kind of drill, but we'll bring the guards and tight end over as well. Um, it's a good way to mix up. You might have your tight ends doing some different things at times. Sometimes they're with receivers working on catching. Um, sometimes you pull them with the guards and work on this. Um, just plan it out and uh, and you'll be in good shape. I I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna send you a link here right now in the chat, um, which will show you um, this buck. Actually, I'm gonna show you two things here. One is some video for, um, Um, buck sweep footwork and you can see some um, bird dogging happening in there this is at the academy i ran this this spring and then i'm all i've also got a nice clip um, that you can look at that shows the buck sweep drill um, with the guards involved as well so you can see an example of how i bring the the lineman in and when you see my kids remember these are kids that are pretty much in high school and they're they're tiny um, but we have a lot of success and that's one reason why I love the wing T is that we can, we can do good things with some speed and some smart, smart little kids. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's dive into, let's dive into the, uh, the, the down and down play and belly series. I call this the belly series. It's what Sherwood calls it. Um, and we, Interestingly enough, one of the classic wing tee belly plays, which is a weak side ISO play, is not. We don't consider that usually in our belly series. So the belly series for us is down, and it's a counter, and then we have a, a keep pass and a down sweep that we run off this. So I'm just going to cover the down and the, uh, the counter here. So down... Down is an interesting play, and I see I see some teams having some problems with this play, and often it's because they don't think of it as as much of a downhill play as they should. It's very similar to a you know an I formation power type play where you're going to get that fullback um, downhill fast. The quarterback is not really going to be getting depth, um, especially as he starts with this pivot um, to get the ball to the fullback. And there's not a lot of thinking on the part of the fullback. It's this is this is a play that we run when we really want to get you know two to four yards, and it's also when when we feel like we've got a good matchup um, on their their you know the way they're playing our strong side. This is a play we might we might run this 15 times in a game um, if they're not able to stop it. Um, so this is a slash off tackle play, and. The fullback doesn't have a lot of thinking to do, as I said. He is just going to get downhill and really aim for that outside hip of the tackle or right at kind of the butt of the tight end. Uh, I'm not going to show the footwork for the halfback on this play. Um, we, we pretty much teach that halfback to run his sweep footwork just like he does for buck sweep. So we, we keep it pretty much the same. The timing is a little different because he's going to get that handoff about one step later, and he he's not going to cut it up inside. We run this one out to the numbers. Um, we run it wide. But in terms of the backfield footwork, uh, getting to the handoff is pretty much identical, so I won't show that here. So let's show the quarterback footwork. So again, quarterback starting in a you know balanced. Um, you could be a little staggered if that's your thing, and that'll work too. Um, balanced stance. And on that first, that first pivot, you see how different this looks from the uh, the Buck Buck series. He's doing a really wide reverse pivot out um, um, with his butt, almost getting to that uh, play side guard, and his left foot really getting almost to the heel of that play side guard. And that play side guard is is you can call it pull, but I think of it more of as a, a hard trap just over two linemen. So he's that that guard is is really not getting depth on this. He's stepping flat to downhill. Um, there's no risk of those two running into each other. 
um, especially if you're getting um, you know good depth and, and you're keeping your splits right. But that quarterback, again, is getting flat almost straight down the line. And I'll, I'll come back to this later, but when we talk about Jet, this is almost exactly the same um, first step we look for when we're running Jet Sweep. Um, it's really, you can just think of that like a swinging gate, that quarterback swinging all the way over. And quarterbacks need to practice this. This is, um, do this yourself a few times. Uh, if you haven't been practicing this, um, it can be hard to keep your balance. So they need to get used to, to doing that and swinging out because that's a full, you know, almost, um, you know, 180 degree turn that they're making. And again, just like on Buck Sweep, they've got their back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to have that ball, um, you know, right, right at their belly button, sticking straight out, hiding it, you know, elbows in close to their side. And um, the defense isn't going to know where that ball is going. That second step, he's going to start to get a little bit of depth with that right foot, and he's going to go ahead and show that ball. Um, so now that ball is going to extend, and he's going to start reaching to that fullback. And on the third step, he's giving the ball. Um, the way we like to teach this is that flow, and this is what, this is what we mean by the mesh, it's the quarterback isn't ever really going to stop. Um, as he walks, as he works through this, if that fullback is properly getting downhill, slashing down, then he's coming through as this left step comes and that quarterback can keep coming forward with that right foot on the fourth step as that quarterback fullback is, pa is uh, passing him. So that's a teaching point as you're bird dogging and you're, you're working through with the actual ball is as you go from that second to third to fourth step, make sure that the quarterback and fullback are still moving right through that handoff. And so you can kind of imagine as he's handing off, that ball's kind of going from right to left and downhill as the handoff happens, um, as the players are kind of two ships passing in the night there. And then on that fourth step, he comes almost straight back. He almost has his back to the line of scrimmage again. And he's faking um, that down sweep. Now, we, you might run the option off the down play. That's kind of the classic wing tee. We, we, we left the option probably five years ago, and we run a, we run a down sweep play. And we, we find we get a lot more mileage out of that. Um, we're not having to teach um, option technique and, and the pitch and reading. Um, it's simpler, and we find how we score a lot more on that down sweep than we ever did with option. So I, I covered down sweep and, and the ISO sweep, which is the weak side version in the playbook. So if you want more on that, um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But that again, that halfback, um, if you compare it to the uh, buck sweep, he's just getting it a step later, but it's also further across the midline. So his timing doesn't really have to change. He can still be getting to full speed here and, and faking that sweep. Now that fifth fifth step, um, you might do it. You'll do it one of two ways. Um, we like to fake the boot, and we will run the boot sometimes off of this. But you also, if you're running the the keep pass off of this down play, you might just have that quarterback keep passing and keep rolling out to play side, um, faking his pass um, without booting. And that's really up to you and kind of what's going to work in your system. But it really beyond this point, it's, it's pretty easy to get the footwork going um, for whatever you're going to do. All right, so let's talk about the fullback footwork on this. I like to place a cone if, I don't, if I'm not working with a line, um, which you probably shouldn't be as you're starting this. We'll put a cone right at the right hip of that tackle, kind of right in the C-gap as just a landmark for that fullback. And, and this, you know, almost couldn't be easier. He's going to step downhill with that right foot, gaining ground, come with his left foot, his arms ready for the handoff. Third step, he's going to be taking that handoff. And fourth step, um, he should just be inside the kick out from that right guard and and turn it up right between the tight end down block and that um, tight end down block the wing back block on the backer and the play side guard kicking out now you might 
you might find you have more success or the way you want to teach it is to lead with that left foot. In this case, it doesn't really matter because he, he's getting – as long as he's gaining ground and getting downfield, that mesh isn't really going to matter that much. I like to start with the right because I, I like stepping with that right foot and being a little more open to the, the quarterback as he's taking that handoff going from that second to third step is why I like it. But you can, you can make it work either way. All right, let's talk about counter play. So, um, you know, this this play is is fairly unique to our offense. It's it's similar to a, a scissors play or um, a counter tray. Um, we just call it counter, and it's 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 one of the first plays even our third graders learn, and we get a lot of mileage out of this play, partly because we rely on that down play so much, and it's a great um, counter off of that. And, and we run it um, so quickly, and the ball is hidden so well, um, and it, it's really an inside running play. It ends up running kind of right over the, the center um, that it, it, can, it can be a big play. And, and one nice thing is somebody before mentioned the counter crisscross, which I'm not going to get into that on this web clinic. But the blocking for our counter play, we block it exactly the same way as the counter crisscross. So from an O-line perspective, we get two plays for the, the price of one. So the initial quarterback footwork is the same as it is for down. Um, we do like to ride the fullback fake for a step. So this is, this is different than the Buck series where we're fa when we're faking the trap, we're not going to show that ball. We do like to show the ball on this play partly because it fits naturally with the way that we're doing the handoff. And we find that in this case, the deception of showing that ball, given how often we're running that down play, really helps pull the linebackers over and buy that down fake to the, the fullback. Um, we use an inside handoff to the wingback. This helps us hide the ball, keeps it inside, and makes it easy for that wingback to make the cut um, uh, following the tight end. And as you can imagine, with all this shenanigans happening with the fake and the, the inside handoff, the timing for that down sweep would be off. Um, so in this case, we don't, we don't even have the quarterback fake that down sweep. Um, you cannot halfback carry off that fake uh, on his own as an influence, or um, you can have him um, seal and block um, and prevent uh, you know an outside linebacker from chasing down that counter from the backside. Fullback footwork is no different. So let's talk about the quarterback here. And this is, um, of everything I'm showing you, this is probably the one that requires the most uh, practice um, just because you've got a lot of moving parts all kind of running through the same space. So you'll want to really get that quarterback, fullback, and wingback working together um, to make sure you get this working properly. So again, that first um, pivot for the quarterback is going to be to open up um, just like he does on down. So he's, he's staying flat and getting wide. That second step, he's reaching that ball out. He's showing it just like he does on down. And on that third step, he's going, he's going to put that ball in the, in the belly of the fullback, and he's just going to ride it from his own right hip to his left hip as he's stepping through with his left foot. And he's pulling it back right as it, right as it gets past his left foot. Obviously, you want to make sure the fullback is – just holding his arms flat. He's not going to grab the ball. This is not a read option type play. Um, it's just a belly fake. And then on that fourth step, that quarterback is just going to think of it. He's finished that right in that fake right hand to, you know, right hip to left hip. And he is just going to give that ball with his left hand on an inside handoff to the wing back. Um, and continue either to fake the keep pass or to boot, just like we talked about before. All right, so just look at that for a second, and then we're going to show the, the wing back footwork.
All right, so we have um, we tilt our wing backs. So I'm showing this wing back here, not perfectly drawn to scale, but we tilt them at about 45 degrees. So he would be about a yard deep and a yard outside the tight end um, with his shoulders kind of pointing straight in towards the tight end. And his first step is to do nothing. We just have him sit there. Uh, this is this is an area where you have a little bit of room to play with what works for you in terms of how the defense reacts, what you want to teach. Um, for years, we would do a jab step. So we would have that wing back step down um, with his uh, right foot, like he's either getting ready to down block or seal on the down sweep and then change his path. But um, we're finding that... Um, some defenses were reading this. Um, so we like to, um, we're just going to have them pause. And you might say, well, they might read that too. And, and you're exactly right. So maybe you just need to change it up every once in a while. But we're going we're gonna to have them pause. That second step is um, flat to a little bit, gaining ground. And it, th this starts off pretty slow. And his, his, guidance is he's waiting he's not waiting but he's looking for that fullback to cross his face and so he's timing that step and his spacing for that fullback to cross his face and that third step coming with the right foot and he's going to be getting that handoff on the inside right as he comes through with his left foot so think about his right foot being forward um, left elbow up and he's stepping forward with that right foot just as that as with his left foot just as the quarterback is is holding that ball out with his left hand. So the quarterback is uh, deeper um, in the backfield than the wing back right now. Um, having just ridden that fake and that wing back now is going to continue his path. And I thought I'd just let's go back and show the show the play here just so you can see kind of what that um, that's fun stepping through all that stuff just so you can see what that path is for that right halfback um, I, I show it you know in this play diagram on the bottom here I probably show it going a little wider than we usually run it um, the key is he's going to run inside of that kick out guard from kick out block from the, the right guard and he's going to follow his tight end who's going to be his lead block we love it when it turns up really tight, kind of just over the center from that A to A to B gap range. All right. Well, let's skip ahead here and get through all my little animations. All right. Let's go to ISO. So ISO, in a lot of ways, is, is very similar to down in terms of how we block it and in terms of the style of play it's it's a it's a it's a pretty trustworthy short yardage play um it's it's kind of our go-to hard hitting weak side play we find if we feel like a team is starting to overplay a little bit to our tight end side um and we want to really keep them honest or just try to exploit maybe uh, some weakness on that side we'll run this iso play um, which um, is also known as the belly or the belly cross block, block play. And I won't get into the line calls, but we do block this differently based on what we see. And we, we teach this starting from the um, third and fourth grade level. It's, it's the only line call the kids really learn at that age and maybe all the way up until they get to seventh or eighth grade football. But even at that age, they're, they learn this line call. And that's whether we're going to do a, a cross block with the play side garden tackle, or we're going to do a, um, an on block um, where we're just going to block out um, with both. And, and the fullback, we, we like him to hear that call, but really um, the key to this is having um, him in a good position where he can find the hole by keeping his shoulders square and having a little bit of time. So this is kind of a more classic um, tailback type, um, delay running play, um, delay ISO, where you're giving a little bit of a time to read the blocks um, to find his hole and maybe even cut back across the center. 
So how do we do that? Well, if you think about the down play, it was the fullback's job to gain ground and to get downfield as quickly as he could. In this case, it's the opposite. The quarterback, his job is to to get into the backfield as quick as he can and for the fullback to basically delay, keep his shoulders square, and be ready to follow his lead block and find his hole. So the quarterback is going to start with a reverse pivot. Um, he's going to come across the midline um, at about 45 degrees. So if I were going to put buck series and then down and then ISO, um, they're each um, successive degrees of crossing that midline. Buck, we want him just barely coming across the midline. ISO, he's going to come across a little bit more at about 45 degree angle um, for depth. And then that down play, he's swinging way across it and staying very flat. That second step with his left foot now, he's going as deep as he can, and he's sticking that ball out to the belly of that fullback. So he's almost ready to deliver and finish that handoff. Uh, but he's the one getting the depth. And on that third step, his job, um, imagine – like right between that left and 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 uh, I feel like I got something wrong here. Oh, right, because he's he's going backwards. Uh, between the left and the right foot at this point, imagine that fullback is right there with the shoulder square, getting ready to go. It is the quarterback's job to stay clear of that fullback and to clear him as he's handing off on that third step on the midline side of that fullback, so on the inside side of the fullback. And that next step, um, we, run, um, we run the ISO sweep off of this, which is very similar to that down sweep. So he's going to stand um, and stay now with his back to the line and fake that sweep to the, uh, to the right halfback or wingback in this case, who's prob we probably put him in motion, and he's done. So let's talk about how we get the fullback um, if somebody asked for the diagram for the counter, hopefully you saw that, but we'll get back to that later on if we feel like um, you still need to see it. Um, so let's talk about the fullback footwork here. His first step is going to be a slight pivot um, in place on his left foot and crossing over with his right foot. So he's staying flat. Um, going straight to his left, um, gaining just a tiny bit of ground with that right foot. But then with that second step, he's squaring up. So basically all he's done is he's he slid over to the left about two to three feet. Um, his feet may not be perfectly square, but his shoulders are getting square, and he's ready for that handoff on the second step. And on that third step, he's stepping forward with his right foot. The handoff is complete at this point, and the quarterback is passing by his right shoulder. And he's going to follow that block um, from that halfback, or if he was in a wingback position, um, right through the hole. I feel like I got ahead of my – yeah, boy, that's in the wrong place. Well, you guys – you learned uh, ISO before you learned counter, and, and, and I apologize for that. I, I must have uh, reordered the slide somehow. So let's um, – we'll go back and, and, and go ahead and ask your questions now on the ISO if you have them. I'm going to show you a diagram too. I'm pretty sure I have a diagram for that. Um, and let's get into counter. Yeah, so I thought something was odd there because I, I knew I was going to cover counter. Oh, no, I know what I did. I just put the talking points – um, ahead of it. All right. So we're all, we're all good. And that's good because we don't have a lot of time left. So I'm going to pause on this for you to look at it. Um, just so you can see, um, the ISO play. I'm not showing the, the halfback footwork. His is pretty simple because he's just getting downhill to his lead block and he might adjust his aiming point based on the line call. Um, if there's a cross block, he's going to be a little bit wider, almost running straight downhill. If there's an on block, he's going to cut inside a little bit right in towards that um, B gap because um, he's lined up just outside that tackle um, for his lead block.
All right. So we already covered the counter. So let's um, let's review the jet sweep real quick. And uh, I'm not going to get into diagramming for this because it's actually it's probably the easiest play to run in terms of footwork because it happens so quickly. Um, um, I'll give one little talking point about the running back, which is more about how to run the play than it is footwork. But um, we use the initial step just like down, which is really just that quarterback swinging um, wide open back to the line of scrimmage. Um, you know that you're probably going to pull that play side guard and he's almost going to bump into that guard as, as that guard is pulling out and away. And that puts him in a position where he's got his back to the line. Um, he can he can easily give the ball to the jet back, who's running right behind him. And if he if you're going to run a fake off this, like we we like to run a trap off of the jet sweep. We like to to boot off this, and we do a, a lot of passing off of a fake jet. Um, it allows us to hide that ball really well because the quarterback's got his his ball behind him. The, the biggest challenge you're going to have with this is timing. Um, what we do is we, we have the quarterback start the running back in motion and we have him snap the ball um, just as that running back is leaving his peripheral vision. So he's watching, you know, that wing back wherever he's coming from. And we'll run, we'll run a lot of jet sweep away from the tight end to the weak side as well. So whichever side that running back is coming from, he's just, um, looking at him through the corner of his eye, as soon as he starts to leave, that's when he's going to snap it. And that's that's probably the best teaching point we have. Uh, but you'll just have to rep it and just work it a lot with your center, your quarterback, and your and your backs. Um, some teams, um, there's a coach that I saw speak at the National Clinic from uh, New Jersey um, that has the running backs. Um, they know the snap count, and they rely on consistent cadence, and they have the running back start his own motion when he needs to start it um, based on cadence. Um, that's a little advance for me because I don't have enough time to work on cadence um, <laughs> in the youth program. So um, that's something for you to think about. All right, I've got a, I've got a final poll and that I'm going to send out here, and then we're going to cover um, some of the questions that were asked. Oh, and I've got a – I'm going to share another um, – video on some of the jet um, footwork and now I'm going to share the uh, final survey and if you haven't clicked through the I write pretty easy surveys these are like one or two questions at most that you can usually just click or type a couple words and then and then come back um, so I did get the other um, question is down always to the strong side and always um, to the weak I'll answer that in just a bit. Making sure I capture them. All right. So to get a chance, please do the survey. Uh, I saw at least one of you asked about my football book. Um, earlier this year, I published a wing T for youth football book, and I'll post a link um, to this in the in the chat room as well. Um, there are two ways you can get this book. If you're if you're a iPad or Mac person, you can go to the iTunes bookstore and you can buy the iBook. And the nice thing about that is that you've got all the videos. There's over 40 videos in the book. Um, they're contained within the iBook, so it's portable. Um, you can be offline, you know, on a plane or out on the field looking at video, showing it to other coaches or players. Um, so it's really handy for that. The downside is it's harder to share with your other coaches. Um, if you go to my site and, and the link I sent that I, I just posted um, will take you right to a place where you can buy the PDF version, which um, doesn't have all the videos embedded, but there are links. Um, to videos online for every video that's in the iBook. And that's an easier book for you to share and, and, and share with your coaches. Also, if you, um, uh, when you go to my site, there's also a bundle. Um, you can get uh, printable play cards to go along with the book if you want to be able to print out um, the books as well. 
All right, so let's get to some other questions. If you have any new questions that haven't already been asked, um, ask them now. Um, so while I um, while I get ready to talk here, I'm going to just jump back and I'm going to put the uh, play diagram up or down at the counter um, just because somebody asked to see that. And again, this will all um, replay that I provide you. So if you want to, you know, pause. In fact, the down and counter play, I didn't mention this. If you go to my site, um, you can get a free, like smaller version of my playbook just to see what's in there. And you can get it in the iTunes store. And that has the belly series in there. So it has the full rules and diagrams for both the down and the belly. So if I think about it here, I'll post a link to that also. So I, I'm showing that on the screen. And then somebody asked the question, is down always to the strong side and belly always to um, the weak side? And the short answer to that is um, generally yes. Um, you can run, we run something called a power ISO play, um, which will run to the tight end side, but we block it a little bit differently and we think of it as a different play. So the ISO play with the cross block um, is a weak side play for us. Um, down, I experimented a little bit last season trying to run down from a, a spread formation and it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. And, and partly it's because um, it really relies on um, uh, that tight end being there and, and getting a good down block on what's usually a pretty good defender combined with a wing back block on a linebacker. And if, when you try to do that, um, you know, with, without the tight end there, I, I find it's just not as successful. Um, somebody asked about the, the cost of the books. Um, the, uh, the PDF version, which is, um, on, which is what you would get from my site. And if you, if you click through to the PDF, that's $29.95. Um, if you buy it bundled with the, uh, play cards, it's $34.95. And if you go to the iTunes bookstore, um, it'll cost you $34.99 for that. And the only reason I charge more there is that Apple takes a lot of that. <laughs> um, they take 30% of the cut, so I just charge a little bit more to, to cover that. All right, I'm looking for any other questions that are coming up here. Um, somebody said, uh, Chris, um, with the younger ages, does it help to shorten the fullback depth or even shorten up the lines, line splits? Um, I know my assistants are going to ask if we have problems with the shorter legs. Um, yeah, I, I think we all try this at some point, and, and generally speaking, it doesn't work. Um, now, with, with the really young kids, so let's say 8, 9, 10-year-olds, I think I'm perfectly fine with – um, foot and a half splits. Um, a lot of coaches want to go to one foot splits and I don't like that. And the main reason is, is that, um, you, you're, you're losing a, you're losing a couple things. You're losing an ability to, to spread the defense out a little bit. You're taking away some of the own angles that you rely on. And usually, um, just to, when, when coaches start shortening splits, um, they're, they're probably not, um, teaching their linemen how to down and gap block properly. And that's, that's beyond the scope for this webinar. We, we, we did, um, I did an O line one a while back and I've got a lot of materials on my site. Maybe we'll do that one again, but, um, shortening splits is, is not where I would go to solve problems you might see with the younger kids, even with their shorter legs. Um, the fullback depth. Uh, yeah, you could probably get by with three to three and a half yards um, as long as you just keep it consistent. Um, being consistent is more important than having it exactly the right depth. And, and if you're finding that he's not getting there on the trap or down quickly enough just because his, his legs are tiny, um, yeah, I would, pull, I would pull both the halfback and the fullback up to maybe three or three and a half foot depth. I'd be much more likely to do that than I would be to tighten up my splits. All right, I'm just going to keep answering some of these questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on the wing T out of the shotgun? I ran some uh, 
I have not run a true shotgun uh, wing T. I've run pistol. Um, I've run some non wing T stuff out of shotgun, like some wildcat things. Um, I, I like pistol um, because it, it, to me, it keeps our offense closer to the, the core of what we do, um, which is going to be under center most of the time. Um, so pistol is to me a nice mix up and, if you if you go to my site or just Google, you know, wing T, coach, uh, pistol, you'll probably see my my site there. And again, I'll I'll probably if I'm smart, I actually post a link for you guys here. Um, um, I like that because um, I love running the 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 rocket out of that, and I love um, I love a counterplay that we run off that. And when you see, I'll post a link here and you might enjoy looking at that. And I've even got a little bit of video there from my, my last season. And it was easy to install. Um, when you get into shotgun wing T, um, you start to see some, some differences um, in, a, in a few things. One is um, you, you probably, and we, we, we do a Twitter chat um, every week on Wednesday nights, if you're if you're into the Twitter thing, um, you should follow me. And and on Wednesday nights, we we do a chat. We talked about shotgun a few weeks ago. And there was a great discussion, and and one one real consensus was that if you're going to run shotgun wing T, um, you probably want a running quarterback because your quarterback is is essentially taking the place of um, depending on how you look at it, either your fullback or your halfback. Um, he's probably going to be running your buck sweep. He's probably going to run that ISO play. Um, so you better have, have a running quarterback, but it, it does bring some other advantages and that you're in a great position for passing. I think it opens up a screen game. Um, so there's some interesting things you can do with that, but I'm, I'm a little more traditional and tend to do under center and did a little bit of rocket last year or pistol and rocket last year. Uh, Somebody else asked, do you pull always pull a guard to lead the down sweep? Um, yeah. Um, and again, uh, let me let me uh, give you guys a um, a link so you can get my belly series um, playbook. And you'll get the down sweep right there, so you can kind of see how we uh, how we teach that. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to stay on here for a little bit um, and uh, um, see if any other questions come up. Um, what you're hearing is a little delayed from what I'm seeing in chat, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the the audio, but I will linger around in the chat for a little bit if any other questions come up. Um, thank you for joining. I hope you have a great season. Um, you've got my email because that's all the reminders that were coming to you are from me. Um, so don't ever hes hesitate to email me. And one final thing is I'm, I'm actually in Western New York all summer. Um, if you're in that general area, either kind of Northwestern Pennsylvania, um, Northeastern Ohio or in Western New York, um, drop me a line. I'm going to be visiting at least one or two coaches this summer and and you know i might make a little road trip out of it if there's any more of you out there so thank you for joining and i'm going to sign off on the the audio right now and and just stay around and, and chat for a little bit take care